are you guys all doing today? Awesome. I think I'm still missing about seven photo waivers. Raise your hand. Have you not turned it into me, to be honest? Okay. All right. Well, I still am missing some, so please, please give those to me by next week. Um, remember that your updated attendance is on our website. Did anybody read the team emails this week that I sent? Okay, a couple of you. Okay, I did send the link to the resources page, so that's where that's at, with all the makeup sheets and um, videos. The makeup sheets for all the sessions were due today. There was a problem. Come talk to me afterwards, but those are due today to make up for your absences in past sessions. And also, uh, please be putting your business plan, financial plan on your Dropbox account, just so we see where you guys are headed with that if you can. Um, and right now we're gonna head into our activity then. Okay, since you guys have to make an elevator speech, we're gonna kind of do a little activity or game for you guys to practice in your teams. <coughs> So this is just kind of an example of a 30 second pitch and hopefully their sound probably um, turn on the oh. Do it then. Eddie Turner, let's start with you. Look straight to that camera. You got 30 seconds. Give us your pitch. Well, I am extremely passionate about technology and learning. And I am very interested in using my years of experience in technology support and teaching, combined with my Northwestern education, to help manage an organization's technology project team, or an organization that has a learning and talent development department. I'd love to help them power up their employee engagement through the use of technologies, such as social media and the Apple iPhone. Look at that, right on the money, and you're very good with time. Okay, so that was just a little example. In um, each of your team, I have a fake company. You might recognize their fake companies from movies and TV shows. So come up with a 30 second pitch. You can even make up products for these companies. You can do whatever, be as creative as you would like. Really no boundaries other than it has to be 30 seconds long. So I'm gonna give you about three to five minutes to make those up with your team. And time is up. We are going to start with um, team one and go from there. And your judges are going to be Allison, uh, Charity, Phil, and Tim. Mention is a bioengineering company that recreates the DNA of dinosaurs. We study dinosaur bones to bring them back to life. And so hard. Here at Dynaco, we are passionate about providing high quality oil and gas to the average consumer by investing in time, money, and effort to be the excellence in our industry. We aim to provide wonderful service while operating within our social, economic, and environmental needs. We limit ourselves to excellence and excellence alone. Uh, we are Dunder Mifflin. Dunder Mifflin strives for excellence uh, when it comes to paper distribution. We make it our goal to meet all of our customers' needs and guarantee full customer satisfaction. Dunder Mifflin provides the right product at the right price, from granite paper to zebra blur, uh, snake flares, full supply of need. Dunder Mifflin. Better paper, better people. <laughs> We are Oceanic Airlines. We don't just come to get profit, but we come to be hospitable for all. Our goal is to touch the needs of our customer and to control our environment as one. We don't want to just do everything for profit, but we want to do it to help everyone. And we're not in it for just the money, but we want to bring just to the world. Goliath National Bank is the most trustworthy place to put your money. We strive to meet the needs of any individual or business to help further their success. Goliath National Bank handles money and investments with care so you never need to worry about fraudulent or nefarious activities. At GMB, we take pride in our services and genuinely long to assist the public.
Alright, Stark Industries. You know us by our name. We're reliable, alright? We have state-of-the-art weapon systems that you can't second guess. Alright, I want to tell you about Jericho, which is the crown jewel of the Freedom Line, alright? It's the first system to use repulsive lift technology. And here's how the system works. The system chooses a target, alright, to which it calculates the distance. The missile is then Launch, and then it reaches its designated height and a distance splits into 16 smaller missiles which hit the target in strategic places. Alright? Find an excuse to let one of these off the chain and I guarantee, I personally guarantee you bad guys will not come out of their caves. <laughs> <laughs> Our prim primarily in primary interest is to develop software that is for exploration, exploration and mining of natural resources. Our most famous product or software is Discover, which analyzes the ground to um, locate all natural resources. Here at Central Park Coffee, our one main goal is to serve people with a smile. We will we'll offer you the best service as possible, providing the best coffee in New York. It's also it's also great for just sitting around while your weird, weird hippie friend sits around and plays the guitar. <laughs> but at the same time, we will give you our best and, and make sure we'll offer you the best coffee with the best environment that the world has ever seen. <laughs> At Pizza Planet, we sell a large selection of pizza, including deep dish or thin crust. You can order whatever you want on it and we will make it. If, when you buy the buffet, it comes with salad bar and desserts and free re refill for drinks. even has an arcade that is bigger and better than any Chuck E. Cheese's. And you don't have to mess with coins. You just put money, give us the money, and we'll give you the card with the same money value on it. And you just swipe it on the machine to use it. And we have party rooms for birthdays and special events that come with personal waiters. We have group rates for groups of 10 or more. So don't forget to come to Pizza Planet when the pizza is out of this world. <laughs> <laughs> our company name is Wonka Industries. Within our industry, we manufacture our products all over the United States. Our products include all different types of chocolate and fruity candies. Within the States, we manufacture to all different stores and gas stations. Wonka, we don't miss out on wonderful experiences. We will, what we will think of next. In second place. Uh, all right. We can have a drum roll for the winning team. Some of you did not do that well. <laughs> so this is a learning process. So today we're going to learn about product development and industry analysis from a leader in the community, Phil Bowers. He is president of Advanced Cabinet Systems um, off of 38th Street drive-by. See the beautiful structure they're in. And he's going to teach you more about his role um, with the company and kind of how Advanced Cabinet Systems have <coughs> differentiated their business among a slew of competitors and how they made that opportunity work for them here in Grant County. So without further ado, welcome Phil Bowers. Thank you. And I'm just kidding. No, nobody was that bad, but some were better than others, to be honest with you. No. But, um, Hey, I'm not that great either, so I've got a tough act to follow. Some of you guys were really good. Um, okay. Anyways, as Allison said, thank you. I'm president of Phil Bow. Er, uh, yeah. 
president of Advanced Cabinet Systems and J.G. Bowers Incorporated. So J.G. Bowers Incorporated owns Advanced Cabinet Systems and a couple of other businesses around town, including J.G. Bowers Construction, which uh, maybe some of you are familiar with. And I am here to talk about product development and competitive analysis. So what is product development? Well, it is the process of designing, manufacturing, distributing, and selling a product, right? That's how you get a product to market, which is what some of you are um, trying to, to learn and develop yourselves. So, oh, 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 I got my slides messed up. Okay, anyways, ACS vision. So, to advance our industry through process and product innovation. Now, I see process, process and product innovation are two totally different things. So, I'll get into that a little bit later, but process innovation is just as, if not more important, than product innovation. So, you know, the ultimate success of a business is dependent on finding what consumers need, developing a product that will service that need without high cost. And that's another thing. You know, anybody can have an idea and sell something to a market that's they lose money on, right? You don't want to do that. You're not going to be in business for very long. So there's a process, right? So you've got an idea, and you take that idea to design phase, build phase, develop it, and release it. So again, anybody can have an idea. Design is a huge part of it. Who can name a company, a product company that's famous for design? Anybody? I don't have any candy. No? Apple. Apple, okay. Well, yeah, there's a little flow there. Apple, right? So think of how important design is for Apple. A lot of people think they invented stuff. They didn't invent anything, right? They just took products at X that already existed and developed them and made them better. Dyson is another company. You know, they didn't invent the vacuum cleaner, but when you think of vacuum cleaners, a lot of you think, think Dyson. Okay, and then you build it. So that's where the real commitment comes in, right? Prototyping, that's expensive. And you gotta build something, um, invest money into, into your idea, and then develop it. Got to figure out how to produce it, manufacture it, um, and, um, and get it to market, which is release. So there's a lot of different ways to sell your product. Um, some manufacturers sell direct, other manufacturers go through retail, others go through another network of dealers. We can get into B2B and B2C businesses, which advanced cabinet systems were a B2B business, so we sell to other businesses. We don't sell direct to the consumer, which somebody like Walmart would do, right? You go into Walmart with your credit card and you, you pay and you, and you buy. So that's the difference between B2C business and B2B business, all right? So these are some of the products we, uh, we make. I don't know if you can see that, but they're just cabinets. We make cabinets for K through 12 schools uh, and hospitals. Uh, and also we've got a retail fixture manufacturing business as well, but we're gonna focus mainly on the cabinet business today. Um, and so now how do we sell those? Well, so we've, we had our idea, we developed it, we figured out how to manufacture it. We spent a lot of money in, in investing in, in a factory um, it, with equipment and, and so now we've got to sell it. So what's the best way to sell it? I could go to your principal and, and ask him if he wants to buy some cabinets or could, your teacher could say, you know, I need some new cabinets. But that doesn't work. That doesn't support the infrastructure we built when we developed our product, right? So we have to set up a network of dealers. So the release stage there of the product development cycle is, is very important. How to get your product to market. If you invest a lot of time, money, uh, an effort on the front end um, of, a, of developing a product and have no way to get it to market, you know, you're out of luck. A Goddard, we do all the casework for Goddard schools, they're a national chain of schools um, all over the country. So, still studying the competitors, right? That's huge. There's some industries out there that are lucky enough not to have a lot of competitors. I tell you, the cabinet business is not one of them because the barriers of entry are very low and it's easy to get in and so all the jobs are publicly bid so we have to be the most competitively priced guy out there. We've got to do it better, faster, and cheaper than the other guy um, and that's how our industry works. Whereas, say, the automotive industry, you've got people who, you know, Mercedes offers a certain value proposition that clients would be willing to pay for. You know, maybe you would like to drive a Mercedes uh, but a Ford is fine with you. Right? 
you want to pay extra money for a Mercedes, you got you know, rolling in dough here from his bioengineering, whatever it was you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I don't, even, I don't even know what that is either, that's hard. But, uh, but he wants to drive a Mercedes and he's going to pay more for it. Well, with cabinets, that industry, we're selling to the public school system. Now, they don't want to pay a lot of money for anything. Um, so it's tough. So they bid our products out. And uh, again, better, faster, cheaper than the other guy. Um, and that's how our whole industry works. So it, it's kind of understood, and that's kind of our market segment in our niche market, which I'll talk about later. But an example you might be familiar with would be uh, the shoe industry, okay? Well, Nike, Adidas, they all make athletic shoes, right? Apple, Sony, all those guys, they make you know phones and televisions and you, know, you name it. Um, Okay, then there's those market segments. So we are in the, we sell through to dealers through K through 12. So we don't sell kitchen cabinets, right? We don't sell cabinets to laboratories or hospitals or, or anything like that. Well, we do a lot of K through 12 stuff. So, there, okay, so then we got the consumer markets, right? So the consumer markets are gonna influence what, what we make, right? So that's why we sell to schools and stuff like that because, I don't know, that's what they're buying. and. Uh, and if they're buying it, we're gonna sell it. Again, we've developed our product to the point that we can sell it to these guys. Um, and that's influenced a lot by the demographics um, of an industry. It's, this is a, actually a lot more tailored towards um, a B to C business. So like, uh, again, back to the automobile industry where Ford and um, Mercedes. So they do a tremendous amount of research about demographics. Really, in our industry, it, it's not that complicated because it's a bid industry, and so it's, it's a little bit different. And if you are going into a bid industry, you better have some deep pockets to get started because it is, uh, it is tough. Um, so you've got to find your niche. And that's something beyond what the competitors are providing, obviously. Okay, so what's our target market? Who do we sell to? Mm -hmm. Well, we've got to get our product to m the market. Again, I'm not gonna go knocking on the, every principal's door across the country. I'm gonna go to the architects because they'll specify our product for hundreds of schools, right? So we start there. Actually, our dealers do that. They specify what we developed. They're working with the community leaders. They're comparing different alternatives. Um, and then general contractors actually buy it. So we happen to own our own construction company, which is vertical integration which is nice because we're our own customer. And there's some companies out there that do a, a heck of a lot of that. Um, anybody familiar with a company called Luxottica? No? Okay. Well, they are a manufacturer of eyeglass, eyeglasses, right? So the glasses on your head, okay, they make those. Uh, but you've never heard of them, right? Because they manufacture brands, they may manufacture for different brands, such as Ralph Lauren or Calvin Klein or um, any of these other you know, private label brands. Then they also own uh, their own brands like Ray-Ban and Oakley and um, see and the other major glasses brand that I'm missing, both sunglasses and you know, regular glasses. So they pretty much wiped out all the competition. So they're their own competition. So well, that's why glasses are so expensive. Okay, and then they thought, well, wait a minute, we can sell these on our own too. So they actually own Pearl Vision, they own Lens Crafters, they own um, any of the big eye care retailers that you can think of, this company owns, right? So they're vertically integrated. Beyond that, they actually own the largest vision insurance companies in the world too. So they're insuring, you know, all these, you know, your eyes. Uh, so they're, they're go all the way through. So they really have no competition. And they've really covered the market from manufacturing to you know, release all five stages of that. I mean, they own that. Now that's, that's really hard to do and that doesn't happen very often, but um, it's, it's, it's pretty impressive. So you think of a company like um, Walmart, right? They've got their own vision centers that are owned by you know, the Walmart um, and they sell their own glasses and stuff like that. So their competition is like Pearl Vision and all these other lens, lens places, right? So technically then, Ray-Ban is Walmart's, one of Walmart's bigger competitors, if you think about it. Anyways, everybody follow that? That's pretty in-depth. 
So when we go to these guys and we try and sell them cabinets, what are we saying? Okay, well, we've got capacity for summer production. And in the K through 12 school market, that is really the only time that you're making cabinets for schools because all you guys are out partying and having a good time and we're making cabinets. So you know, think about that if you want to get in the cabinet business. Um, but uh, but that's, that's really a big selling point. And so you've got to think of selling points specific to your industry and your product. Uh, proven record in the industry. Well, we've done this before. You know, we know what we're doing. We've been around for a long time. Strong dealer network across the United States. Some of these architects, they've, they've got multiple states. They need to know that if they specify us, that we can cover all their areas. Right? And we're competitively priced, which, as we talked about, is a, is a big deal. Okay. Anybody know what a SWAT stands for? Okay. Well, this is a good tool that you guys really should apply if you haven't already. So, okay. SWOT analysis stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So, when you're evaluating your, your business plans and, and deciding, you know, um, how to launch into a market or whatever, you got to analyze your strengths, right? So why are you better than the other guy in your specific market? You know, what's going to set you apart? What are your weaknesses? Okay, maybe you want to, um, okay, for instance, Echelon Furniture. Maybe some of you are familiar with them, right? They make baby cribs, uh, but people can break down baby cribs, make them in China, ship them overseas. It's, it's hard to compete against that. So there's the overseas market out there. And in our particular business, the types of cabins we manufacture, it doesn't make sense to do that. But that was analyzed and well thought out. Opportunities. Okay, well, maybe you've got a really good market. You know, um, social media market, you know, like Facebook, Twitter, all those guys, hell of a lot, heck of a lot of opportunity in that market. And uh, there's some really successful guys who capitalized on it, um, just like I said um, when the in the um, I guess early 30s or whenever the Industrial Revolution was. You guys probably know that better than I do. <laughs> but, but but you know you've got the railroads and the, when was that, Tim? You, you, I lived through it. So yeah. Well, you probably know, right? That's 1860. Yeah. Okay. You that was yeah. You were about a teenager around that. Yeah. All right. Thanks. So, anyways. <laughs> long time ago but um, um, so where was I so they saw an opportunity right they capitalized on it threats okay well what could hinder you well obviously competition is a big thing you know uh, if the other guy's bigger than you and he can make it better faster and cheaper then you know what's your value proposition what what are your strengths what are your opportunities this is a, a little diagram that I, I would strongly suggest you use, and you'll get copies of these slides. Um, it would, and this isn't just for, um, just for product development, right? This can be used for anything. This can be used for a project. If you're making any kind of big life decision, I think this is just a valuable form to have. Um, you know, help figure out where you want to go to college, okay, and all these other things that happen in your life. But, but it's a really helpful tool to sort of organize your life a little bit. Um, and of course, it's a major tool for product development and um, starting and operating a business. Okay, so now that you've entered into this industry, you have to know it, right? Is it established, new, is it expanding or shrinking? Right. What about the profits? Not going to last long if you don't have a lot of that, right? Um, and how's it changed? Where's it going? You know, the tube television industry is not going very far, so I wouldn't recommend that. Um, and how has technology impacted it? You know, you saw that product development cycle. Um, and some of you might be bored to tears by now, and I'm, I'm sorry, stay engaged here. How is that technology, you know, how's that gonna impact you? Because you invest a million, millions and millions of dollars in a facility, and you've gotta finance machinery in a building for 30 years, but then five years down the road, all of it's outdated. You got 25 years left to pay for it. What are you gonna do, you know? It's, a, it's quite a big matzo ball hanging out there. Okay, and then nature competition. 
direct and indirect competitions. I mean, so Disney and Harley Davidson. So, uh, what's a competitor of Disney? Universal. Universal Studios. Good. All right, that's the only competitor of Disney, apparently. There's a lot. There's a lot of them. They own a lot of the market. I don't know. They might even own Universal Studios. But you get the point. They own like half. Yeah. Well, thanks. 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 <laughs> <laughs> or Aaron. Aaron. I get you and your brother confused. I know this guy since he was like a, a little kid. Look at him. He's, yeah, he's always been kind of, yeah. Okay, uh, now Harley Davidson. Um, wh who, who's a competitor of Harley Davidson? BMW. Okay, BMW, good. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of them, right? Okay, so Disney and Harley Davidson. They are, no, oh wait, yeah, you said Toshiba, and I said, all right, good. I don't know, I don't know either, I'm going to tell you. It's a bioengineering firm, for all I know, I don't know. Um, I know what you meant, though, what, what Toshiba was? Oh, that's what it is. What? What? Yeah, there's something. It starts with a T, there's something else. I don't know, okay. Yeah, doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> So, okay, so obviously, you know, these guys are in totally different industries, right? But they are going after a certain pool of money, right? It is your discretionary income. So, for instance, Disney, they're going after that vacation fund you've set aside, right? So is Harley Davidson. So, you know, there's only so much of that money, and they're fighting for it. So does that make them competitors? You betcha, sure does. So that's indirect competition. You know, they don't directly compete. You know, they're not, Disney's not building better bikes than Harley Davidson. Harley's not making better movies than Disney or theme parks, but they are fighting over the same pool of money. So that's something else to, to rely on. And, and in the casework industry, you know, we've got our laminate casework, and then there's wood cabinets, metal cabinets, all sorts of different cabinets. So, um, something else that you need to be aware of. And then major competitors, right? So you've got local and national. For instance, um, you know, you'll see signs uh, for J.G. Bowers construction around town. And we'll do advertising and we'll sponsor things in Marion. But we won't do that for, uh, with advanced cabinet systems because there's not a lot of people here in Marion who buy our cabinets. You know, they're, they're specified through architects all over the country. So it doesn't make sense. We don't have a lot of local competitors for cabinets. Well, we've got a, a, a lot of local competitors for construction. Well, actually just, well, really nobody competes against us. <laughs> uh, but our competitors on the national scale for casework, are, there's, a, there's a lot of them, but there are a lot of them. So, um, you know, you're gonna compete differently in different areas. So anyways, that kind of wraps it up here. Um, I've got a couple of resources here um, that are on your slides that can kind of help you get some of this demographic information because for a lot of, a lot of the stuff you guys are working on, that's going to be very important. Um, and that's that. Oh, yeah, I have one more thing here. And it's kind of hokey, but it's, it's really powerful. So you got to stay positive, right? And if you're positive, you can be passionate. And if you're passionate, you can be persistent. And I tell you what, if you're not going to be persistent, then you better quit now because it's going to get pretty tough and you're going to want to quit sometimes and all that stuff. But if you just stick with it, you'll come out on top. Um, I, I guarantee you, I've seen it happen. So um, anyways, that's, that's kind of hokey, but pretty important. Okay, any questions? Oh. oh, you're going to give me a round of applause? All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have a couple like announcements what? before we um, depart for the evening. Um, remember attendance. If you have any issues, please talk to me afterwards. It's always updated on a website. The videos and PowerPoints to help you with makeup sheets are always there. And if not, just let us know. Uh, upload what you have this week to your Dropbox, your financial plan, your business plan. Uh, for those of you who don't have the photo waivers in yet, please give them to me by next week. Otherwise, you'll have to put a blurred photo box over your head in all the pictures. So that's fair. So, just kidding. <laughs> Make sure you get those in. Uh, did everybody get attended? And did everybody get the industry analysis paper? 
for your teams. They have to go up. Okay? Alrighty. See you guys next week then.